All right, welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Tommy Habib. After our next guest, we're going to be talking Tesla in the round table, so make sure you stay with us. But right now, let's welcome Tim McGinnis, CMO of Coral Partners, to the show. How are you, Tim? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. No problem. Any guy that's going to say, listen, I walked, stumbled into this thing, and I just knew I've got my next billion-dollar company, I got to talk to. So tell me about the day that uh, you saw this technology uh, and started, well, you didn't, you're the CMO of Coral Partners, but tell me about uh, Coral Partners and what you guys do, because it's really pretty cool. Well, uh, about uh, 32, uh, actually, um, yeah, about 32 years ago, uh, I helped found a little company called Tiger Direct, which became a $3.8 billion technology retailer. Um, so after leaving Tiger Direct, um, I was involved in a couple of businesses of my own. And as a result of an introduction by one of our board members, um, I had an opportunity to sit down with Mark and Chris uh, Jureen, who are the founders and inventors of the technology that Coral Partners has developed. Uh, this happened in April of uh, 2016, and through the course of the conversation, um, philosophically we had a lot in common, but also we had a love for being disruptive in the marketplace and developing extraordinary technology. Mm -hmm. So from that point, over the course of about a year and a half, um, I began to find out more and more about the company and began to uh, make a considerable commitment uh, to the re-entrance of this particular company back into the marketplace. Once upon a time, they were acquired by one of the world's fifth largest oil companies out of Malaysia, uh, who acquired their technology and their patents, etc. And that agreement expired in uh, early 2015, and they began their uh, their reemergence back into the marketplace as an independent company with the uh, the re-ownership of their intellectual property. So, After having taken a look at it, I realized um, from someone who I had known years before, an American astronaut by the name of Scott Carpenter, uh, who had been an avi 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 aviator, excuse me, and someone who had been instrumental in revolutionizing certain submarine technology, submersible technology, particularly the conceptualization of winged submersibles. And lo and behold, uh, Mark and Chris had invented, in fact, a true winged submersible in their Nova Ray product. Now, I've seen this thing, and it is really very, very cool. And then what you can do with it, I mean, uh, just strictly, you know, as an, an amateur, I'm going, now, I, it's almost like flying a drone, you know, but and I'm really taking it out of perspective because I'm talking about from a consumer standpoint, but you'll never have a consumer model of this. But um, it is a – tell me, is it kind of like a drone that's a submarine? Well, first off, um, it's exactly like a drone except that it is connected to the, uh, to the vessel and the person that's piloting it back on board the ship through the umbilical or the tether or the cable. Mm -hmm. um, but in most respects, that's exactly what it is. It's like flying a F-18 fighter underwater oh uh, with all of the control surfaces and, and extreme maneuverability that that brings. Now, we will have more lower-end commercial models available, never truly a consumer model, because the ocean really doesn't lend itself to a consumer product. The the, the miracle that happened in the quadcopter marketplace is uh, the first quadcopter was developed in the, in the late 1950s uh, by one of the pioneers of vertical aviation. Mm -hmm. But it really didn't catch on until about five years ago when the Chinese really got innovative. But the air is a much more forgiving environment. A small $1,000 quadcopter can compete very effectively with $10,000 commercial aerial drones. But in the water, you've got all of the incredible forces and pressures and performance requirements 
um, that require an industrial product in order to be able to be usable underwater. But to fly this thing, yes, it's exactly like flying an aircraft. It's flown with a joystick. You fly it using aviation-like terminology. It has a rudder. It has uh, control surfaces like, like ailerons on its wings. Its stability comes from the same kind of aerodynamic, except in this case hydrodynamic forces, that provide, except in this case, an aircraft has lift that would take it upwards, hold it up in the air. In this particular case, the wings are actually designed inversely so that the lifting is actually pushing downward on the device to hold right. it stable as it's being towed through the water because there's a natural tendency uh, to have the nose flip up and to rise, but very, very similar. Well, I'll tell you, if you did have a consumer model, it just go take me about 10 feet. Could you imagine the video that you'll be, you'd be able to, to grab with a, with a kind of a, you know, a consumer version of that would be just very, very cool. So if you do decide you're going to go there, take it to China and, and I'll be a customer for, for life for you. But let's talk. Well, actually, this product is manufactured in the United States and it is our goal to essentially keep this an American made technology. Uh, Even though we, we have components that are manufactured all around the world. That is one of the unique things about it is this is a made in America robotic technology. Well, it's probably, it, I, I mean, I don't even know what the price of this, this thing would be. But, uh, and so how many do you actually manufacture? Is there a, a great demand for this? Well, we're talking about an industrial product that is relatively pricey. For an industrial marine submersible, you're looking at prices that run anywhere from a quarter of a million to many millions of dollars. And this has a lot to do with the ruggedness of the design requirements, because when you put a device down to a thousand feet, you're dealing with many, many, many times the atmospheric pressures that exist on, say, an aerial drone. So aerial drones don't have to be a lot different to fly at 10 feet or a thousand feet. But when you take a device like this and you go from surface to 4,000 meters, you know, a little under 13,000 feet, you're talking about incredible pressures. In fact, the vast majority of the world has never been visited by humans because of issues like that. Mm -hmm. But if we do a scaled-down version, which actually is planned for next year, one of the great things about it is that it'll have the same kind of uh, stability hydrodynamic controls that the unit that you're seeing, which averages in prices from about a quarter of a million all the way up to about 500000 It depends upon the options. Yeah. Sonar technology is expensive. Even the thrusters can cost as much as $10,000 each to keep this under full and complete control underwater. Oh. Okay, it's Tim, an extraordinary device. I, I'm going to have to ask you one last question. We've got about sure. 20 seconds, if you can tell me. What are your goals? What are we trying to accomplish right now, short term, with your company? We have a million-dollar raise in the works right at this moment. So we are raising initial capital to get us solidly back in the market. We have orders on the desk uh, right now. When those orders come through, our company will be profitable. So in the short term, it is get ourselves in the market, make sure that the marketplace is fully aware of the extreme benefits of this technology, this arcuate-shaped wing technology that overcomes all of the limitations associated with all other towed ROVs or even okay. free-flying ROVs in I, the marine environment. I hate Extreme to cut current. you off here. Real quick, yep. give me your website, how they can reach you, Tim. The website is Nova, N-O-V-A, Ray, R-A-Y, R-O-V dot com, and they can reach us through the website, or they can call us at uh, toll-free 833-NOVA-RAY. Thank you so much, Tim McGinnis, CMO Coral Partners. We appreciate you being on the show.